Good evening. Welcome along. Another Wednesday night, 8 p.m. here in the UK and various assorted times around the world. Hi to our friends in the USA, Iceland and Germany tonight. Right. OK, we have a fantastic lineup. Uh, a little bit later on, we uh, have a, a little half time interlude uh, and I'll be uh, interviewing a couple of uh, magic royalty out there, which is uh, Sarah Ella Fant and uh, Dan Holland. And before we move on, uh, a, a, Stu, could you just get Tommy up beside me for a second? And uh, just mention that last night, uh, Tommy organized a fantastic benefit uh, for Ukraine. And it was a terrific show. It went on to a silly amount of hours. Tommy worked his little butt off trying to get it going. Uh, we are still collecting money. So anybody who would like to dedicate some money, to donate some money, rather, wrong words in the wrong order there, uh, hop over to that URL there. It's a fantastic organization, well audited. The money actually goes to the people that deserve the money. Uh, yeah. You can have a look at their website. And the, so, Tommy, thank you ever so much for all your hard work and for what went on last night. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And back to the show. So, our first performer, ready and waiting on uh, the Isle of Man. Hi, Michael Kelly, come on down. Hi, Kevin. Thank you. Um, I want to dip into the land of fairy tales, I suppose, tonight. I've always liked myths, legends, folk tales, and fairy stories. And one of the most famous collections is um, that selection of stories, which we know in the West as the Arabian Nights. And I've already asked Tommy if he'd like to assist me this evening. So, uh, Tommy, if you could uh, please lend me a hand here. Now, I have a book, a uh, box, which mm -hmm. contains a whole range of wonderful things, all associated with the Arabian Nights. And we're not going to have time to get into the heart of this tonight. There are so many wonderful things in here scrolls with stories in poetic form. What we can do is have a look at these Arabian Nights storytelling cards. Have a look at these, Tommy. Each of these cards, they can be mixed up and selected, and each one represents a chapter in a story. Some of them aren't happy chapters. There's mm. somebody there who's obviously in grief over something. Um, here we have somebody being carried off by a djinn. There are various monsters, um, including sea monsters. Mm. They're all different, fairy women. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like a fairy woman, Tommy, eh? <laughs> and, I, I, I love a fairy woman. So. You do, you do, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> flying horses, all of the classics of the tales are here. And we'll give these a bit of a mix and you just tell me when you're happy with that. Because tonight, Tommy, we're going to tell your story. Every story is an allegory, really. Every time we hear any story, we bring our own meaning to it. Are you happy with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let's see, let's make a little room here. Uh, get these all out of the way. And take out cloth. Just a little of that Arabian Nights flavour for us. Mm. So now that we've mixed the story cards up, Tommy, I'm going to just deal out the top ten in two rows. Okay. So 
So what we've got are 10 story cards, a top row and a bottom row, five chapters in your story, but you get to choose which chapters you want. For each chapter, top or bottom? First chapter, Tommy, top or bottom? Uh, bottom. Bottom chapter, you'll lose that one. Second chapter, top or bottom? Uh, top. Top one. Third? Top. Top. Fourth? Bottom. Bottom. And the all important final chapter, top or bottom? Mm, uh, top. Top chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let me just take a look at you, Tommy, and let's tell your story. As we look at your first chapter, I'm seeing an image of a of a poor boy, as so many of these classic tales start, and he's living long ago and far away on the outskirts of a city. There will be something like Baghdad, I guess, in the Arabian Nights, and his family is penniless. And all he does each day, he tries to find little pieces of junk that maybe he can sell in the bazaar, enough just to earn some money to feed his family for the day. And one day he finds a pile of rubble just outside the city wall. But there's something gleaming in it. It's an old battered oil lamp. And he takes that and he thinks, oh, might be worth a copper or two and brings it to the bazaar to sell. Let's see how the first chapter of your story goes, Tommy. Well, that's interesting. We have a picture. Now, if you look, we have a young man standing there mm -hmm. in front of a bazaar. And in his hand, he's holding a lamp. Hmm. So it looks like we're on the right track to start with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nobody wants to buy his lamp. And in the end, he offers it to somebody who just says, this is worthless junk. And they kick it off down an alleyway in disgust. He goes running after it. And there was a beggar sitting down that alley. And it upset the beggar's plate of coins. So the boy helps him to gather up his coins, puts them back on his plate, and he picks his lamp up and the beggar says, that's a really interesting looking lamp. And the boy says, I'm, I'm trying to sell it. We've got nothing. Uh, and the beggar said, well, look, I haven't got much. Just a plate of copper coins here, mere pennies. But I'll pay you that for the lamp on the condition that you listen to my story first. So the boy says, okay. And then the beggar started telling him a story, a story of a prince who lived out in the desert in a palace and his father was insisting that he marry, but the prince was refusing because he was in love with the woman of his dreams. Literally, he'd only ever seen her in dreams. Mm. Every night he'd dream of this strange woman and he wouldn't marry anybody else. So his father said, you're getting married, like it or not, tomorrow. It's all arranged. That night, the boy wandered out into the desert. One of the courtiers followed him to see what he was doing, thinking I'd better report back. And he looked over the top of the dunes and saw the boy approaching a strange fairy woman standing on a carpet in the middle of the desert. The prince joined her, then the woman of his dreams, the fairy woman, and the carpet rose into the air and flew far away. And he was gone. Nobody likes the bringer of bad news. And he had to go back to the palace and explain to the sultan that his son had flown off on a flying carpet. Just as we see, Tommy, in the second picture of your story. Wow. 
Well, it wasn't too bad for the messenger because one of the other courtiers interrupted and said, actually, this reminds me of a story I once heard. When a man went in quest of a fairy woman and she set him a task to go to, far away to the lands of Egypt where the old pyramids stand, because in the heart of a pyramid was a fabulous treasure, a lamp, a lamp which contained a djinn, a djinn which had the power to grant a wish to the person who released it. And this hero crossed land and sea to get to the lands of the pyramids. He fought monsters on the land. He fought monsters in the water. And finally, he fought the fire-breathing dragon, which encircled the pyramid. How's the third chapter of your story, Tommy? We see the hero there defeating a monster on land while another waits in the water. And in the distance, a pyramid with a dragon flying around it. Mm. 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 Time passes. The hero grows old and finally wanders home, back to where he came from. An old man wandering over the desert with a sack on his back full of the treasures he's accumulated in a long life. And he arrives in the bazaar of the city and he says, it's me, I've returned and I've brought all of these treasures with me. And the people laugh at him and they empty out his sack and it's full of nothing but rubble. And they tell him he's delusional. And he becomes a beggar sitting in an alleyway just off from the bazaar, begging for coins. And the sack he once carried is still beside him with a hole in it where the precious lamp had fallen out. And there we see Tommy, a worn man with a worn sack crossing the desert. And that leaves one more chapter to your story, Tommy. What will it be? Here's the old man, he's had his adventures. He doesn't want any more. And there's the lamp that you found in the pile of rubble outside the city. And there's the plate of coins that he's offered you for the lamp. And the question he puts to you now, Tommy, is this. Will you take? coins. There's probably enough there to pay for one meal. Just coppers. Or will you take the promise of a greater gold? Will you take the treasures of the imagination and the gold that rises with the sun every morning in your heart? What's it to be, Tommy? Will you choose the coins or will you choose the lamp? Definitely the lamp. Of course you will. <laughs> Here we are, Tommy. Here's the lamp. <laughs> I want you to think of your greatest wish. Tell me when you have it in mind. Don't tell me what it is. Mm -hmm. I have it. I'm going to rub the lamp now. You make your wish. That wish will come true as long as you never tell anybody else what you wished for. My gift to you tonight, Tommy. I wish. And if you private message me your address on Facebook later, I'll mail you the lamp. That's a reminder. Thank you, everyone. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, Megan. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you, Michael.
as mystical as ever. Absolutely fantastic. Love his stories. Uh, Michael does uh, does shows also, uh, which are really, really rather good. I watched one of his shows last week. Keep an eye out on, on Facebook for them. Uh, right, moving on from the Isle of Man over to uh, the US of A and Texas and our next performer, uh, who is a fantastic, lovely lady who performs classic magic. Welcome along, Ravina.
Mm. Right, okay, so back to the UK and to a young man who's been uh, attempting to join us a couple of times in the last week and we've had a, a few video mishaps, but he's here live and in person tonight. So hi there, Peter, come in. Be best if you unmute, young man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the young man. I'll pay you the fiver in a few minutes. Okay, now we just need a quick volunteer. I don't know if there's a volunteer around. Are there any volunteers? Paul. Oh, Paul. Okay, it's just a... Okay, well, okay, it's a quick trick, Paul. So anyway, I'm just going <laughs> to... You seem disappointed. You want someone else? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not a mind reader now. <laughs> you're not a mind reader. <laughs> don't assume that. Anyway, a quick trick. I'm just going to rifle through this deck just to make sure you all can see. You know, they're all um, different cards. It's not a trick deck or anything. Now, I'd like you just to say stop any point when I flick through the cards. Stop. Okay, you said stop. Right. So I'm going to look away. Okay. And if you can take a look at the card. Hold, hold gonna... it a bit higher. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, a bit higher. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put the card back into the deck. I'm just going to shuffle the deck again, hit the deck again. Now, I mean, most, most magicians claim to be mind readers and they sort of, sort of read a person's mind directly. But, but I'm a precognitive mind reader. Oh, Peter, you're back. You froze there. Yeah, I was just standing still. But anyway... <laughs> so I'm going to basically, <laughs> yeah, just taking a bit of a break, mid-trick break. So I think this should be the actual card you selected. Okay. Right. You don't seem too convincing. I assume it was the card you selected. Uh -huh. So for the, fine, all right, so the next part of the trick, I'm going to try and um, select that card from this deck. And all you've got to do is basically give me your favorite number and I will bring the card from wherever it is in the deck to what your favorite number is. So can you quickly give me your favorite number, you know, before, uh, before I get thrown off? 29. 29? Okay, 29. Um, okay. Do you want a right, smaller so number? Got, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I've got number 29 when I get to it. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, you can see my hands. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty. I wish, it's, I wish this was money I was counting. So this should be your card according to my prediction. If it's not, then sorry, folks. So this should be your card. Very good. Have you frozen? You. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a quick trick tonight. I've only got five minutes, I'm afraid. So hope you will enjoy the trick and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks, Peter. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sorry that we lost you a few times during to the vagaries of the internet, but that is oh, okay. what happens occasionally. Oh, well. Okay. It's like so from Peter in the UK, back to the USA, and to a new friend of ours who's uh, started performing with us, Kip Cherry. Hi there, Kip. How's it going there, Kevin? Hey, I need an assistant, and uh, I saw a beautiful smile. I'd like to bring oh. up Isabel to help me. Yeah. Isabel. Can you go? There she is. Great. Isabel, pay close attention here. I have five cards. All right. Notice I have here the five of spades. I have the jack of diamonds. I have the king of spades, the five of hearts, and the king of diamonds. Five cards, Isabel. You with me? Yeah. Now, this is sacrilege. I'm going to take yeah. these five cards and do something no magician should ever do. I'm going to take these cards and tear them in half <laughs> and most people would think oh my word he's doing the torn 
and restored, but these will never be restored. What we have here is two halves. We have five of spades there, five of spades there. But if I turn this one upside down, this one will not be a five of spades because the five of spades is down here, correct? Correct. You with me? I am. Okay, so I'm gonna set these now down on the table. Let's drop the lens. Watch carefully here. We have a face down and we have a face up. The question of this game is, will the cards match, Isabel? And with that, we're going to ask the question, and we're actually going to spell out the words. With each letter, you get to pick whether we should move the top card off of the face up or the face down, and we'll take the top card and move it to the bottom. All right? Okay. You with me? So, so the question is, will the cards match? For the word will, W, would you like face up or face down? Face down. Face down, that takes the W. Face down goes to the bottom. I, face up or face down? Face down. Face down, for the letter I, we go face down. For the letter L, face up or face down? Face down again. Face down again for the letter L. And then for the letter L, second letter L in will, face up or face down? Face up. Face up. Okay, now notice you had me do three cards from the face down and only one card from the face up, but we spelled the word will. So we'll take the top card off of each stack and we'll set them aside for right now. So will the, for the, the letter T, face up or face down? Face down. Face down for T and for H, face, face up, up or face down? Huh? Face up. Face up and the letter E. Face up again. Up again. Okay, now we take the top card off of each stack because we've spelled the word the. Will the cards match? For cards, letter C, face up or face down? Face down. Face down for C. For A? Face down again. And for R? Face down. And for D? Face up. And for S? Face up. Very good. Now we spelled the word cards. We'll take the top card from each stack, set it right over here. Will the cards match? Final word, the letter M. Face up or face down? Face up. Face up. That's M for the letter A. Face down. For the letter T. Face down. For the letter C. Face down. And for the letter H. Face up. There we go. And we spelled match. So let's take the top card from each stack and we'll set them right here. So the question was, will the cards match? Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. And you had your choice of how to mix those up, Isabel. But look, Absolutely. that's... That's just a single card. It wasn't a singular phrase. It was, will the cards, plural, match? Look here. Will the cards match? Wow. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Kip. Thanks, Kip, very much. Hope to see you again, mate. So, moving back to the UK and to uh, to up sort of north-ish somewhere, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of talk in half English and half Derbyshire and say, "Welcome, me duck, Roy Stone, who's muted." Oh, there we go. Yeah, help me, ducks. Nice to be with you tonight. 
Um, so I, I was, could I have Dan Arlen as a, a volunteer, please? Is that possible? Oh, to, this, this is really an honor to, uh, to, to play for a hero. You're my hero. I've seen more video hours of you than thing. And so I know a lot about you, Dan, but what I don't know is I don't know your birth sign. I can promise you I don't know your birth sign or when you were born. Do you know what time you were born, Dan? I do. Uh, it's a bit quiet. What time was you born? You want me to tell you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was born at uh, 5.15. Is that in the morning? Yep. You, you're kidding me. Nope. All right, I'm going to write that uh, down so we, so we can come back 5.15. Okay, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to swap cameras. Uh, as I say, I don't know your birth sign, um, but we're going to do something with these. There. Horoscope. These are horoscope cards. Okay. So, man, what I need to do, I'm going to show you a list of birth signs. Obviously, don't tell me which one was yours. Can you see that? Uh, can you see that? Hello? Can you see that, Dan? Has he froze? They appear to have frozen, Roy. Oh. Dan seems to have frozen. Oh, God, yeah. Give it a second and then, oh, yeah, they've gone completely now. Oh, we lost oh, right. it. Okay, just bring, bring somebody else in. Yeah, we're back. Oh, right. Oh, okay. they're back. Dan, can you see that, Dan? Can you see? Yeah, we were gone a bit. Uh, sometimes uh, when you share yeah, a screen. Can you, can you see the list of birth signs? It's froze again. Oh, no. Oh, it's froze oh. again. Oh. Kevin, pick me someone else. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, Stuart will, because I'm... Uh, We'll... Okay. Um, Jill? Oh, okay there we go. Off? They're coming back in. Yeah, just pick me, Jill. Just pick me, Jill. Uh, have you picked me, Jill? Have you picked me, Jill? Try one more time. Hold on. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll try one more time, Dan. Hello? No, it's, it's frozen again. Pick me, ah. Jill. Pick me, Jill. Jill, would you come in, please? Can you bring Jill in? Hi, yeah. Jill. So, uh, Hello, so we're back. Yeah, oh, so same, question, same question for you, Jill. So I'm going to use you because they keep freezing. Do you know what time you were born, Jill? About 8 o'clock in the evening. About 8 p.m. Uh, is it, what do you say? In the in the evening, did you say? Yes, 8 p.m. Okay. Yeah, so I was trying to write this because obviously it's a different time to when, uh, when Dan was born. Okay, so Jill, I'm going to show you the same thing. Uh, don't tell me your birth sign, but can you see your birth sign on that list? Well, obviously you can because they're all there. I can. Uh, it will tell you your birthstone, but under that it will tell you a lucky number. Can you see the lucky number? Yes. Okay, can you just remember the lucky number? I can. Okay, we're going to take that off screen and we're going to come back to this screen. Okay, so Jill, we've got, we wrote down there what time you were born. Jill, all I need to know from you, obviously I don't want to know your birth sign, I just want to know what your lucky number was. 13. 13. So what we're going to do, we're going to deal out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cards. Okay. Right. You could have kept going, you could have had more. Okay. Uh, I've got one, um, I've got one lucky card. I'm going to find here it is. I'm going to show you in a minute, Jill. This is my lucky card. The four of clubs. Right. Okay. And on the back it says your lucky card. Right. If I put it up a bit, Jill, it says a card underneath it. Oh. <laughs> Remember, you dealt to one card. The Ted of I couldn't have known what that was, Jill. But Jill, there's more than that. What you said you was born eight o'clock in the morning. Evening. At what you say in the evening. Yeah, that's amazing, Jill, because I could tell you, Jill, we've got something in common. I was born at eight o'clock in the evening also. Wow. Jill, you don't have to take my, my word for it, because what I did before I came on, I set the watch to the time that I was born. <laughs> Wonderful, amazing. But finally, Jill, Jill, I don't know what your birth sign is, Jill. Uh, what was your birth sign? I've got to tell you now, have yeah, I? Yeah. Leo. And I remember I told you this was my lucky card. And we look on the back of it, Jill. 
It says your star sign is Leo. Yeah. Thanks, Jill. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. Right. Okay. So from uh, that there north in ish part of the UK to uh, Iceland and our good friend over there, Gunnar. Come in, Gunnar. Hello, hello. Hope you're all well. Uh, I was wondering, uh, can I have Lee Alex to help me, please? Hello, you certainly Lee. can. Good evening. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Thank you. And you? Very fine. Very fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, do you know what an influencer is? Like uh, on the internet influence? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, on, I kind of. On the social media. There are sure. influ influencers. Uh, are you an influencer? Mm, I wouldn't say so, no. <laughs> okay. are, are you a follower? No. You're, you're, you're not easily uh, led to do something you don't want to do. Oh, I could say, yeah, you could say I'm gullible and say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, raise your right hand like this. Okay, so, so you are a follower. You, 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 oh. you uh, can be told what to do. So uh, I'm going to try you out. Um, so from now on, uh, I just need your voice. So listen okay. to what I have to say. Um, so here we have a red card, Lee, and here we have a blue card. And those two are influencers. I don't know if they are on Twitter or Snapchat or, or Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever, but they are real influencers because uh, I've got followers here and all the followers on the red side have got a red dot and all the followers on the blue side have got a blue dot. So the influencers, they can be so powerful. If I take one of the red cards from the red side and put on the blue side and I take one of the blue cards and put in between the red cards. And same with the red card, I put it in between on the blue side. The influencers, they are so powerful that the followers on this side, they all become red. And the followers on the blue side, they all become blue. So if I take two of the blue cards and put them on the red side, and I take two of the red cards and put them on the blue side, I don't have to do anything. The influencers, they are constantly putting out something on the social media. And all the followers, they want to be like the influencers. So all the cards on the red side, they become mm -hmm. like the influencer, they become red. I mean, I'm sure you would also do that, Lee. And all the cards on the blue side now are now blue. It doesn't matter, like I told you, if the cards are red or if they are blue. It matters what the influencers do and how they are. So if I take the red ones and put them over here, and I take a red card and put it on the blue side, I take a red card and put it on the red side. I take another red card and put it on the blue side and then red card on the red side. And the same, but opposite with the blue. I take a blue card, put it on the red side. Take a blue card, put it on the blue side. A blue card on the red side and a blue card on the blue side. And then I alternate them. I put red, blue, red, blue, and blue, red, blue, red so now they are completely mixed up i just have to give them a little while check on social media see what the influencer is doing and the influencer on the red side has influenced all the followers to become like um, the influencer and the ones on the blue side they all want to be like the blue influencer so this is social media for you <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you, Lee, for helping me. Very good, very good. <laughs>
Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Gunnar. Thank you, Gunnar. Wow. So, halfway time. Time for a change of direction. Uh, we're going to uh, bring in uh, some magic royalty to visit us tonight. So, I'm happy to, to bring you two of the most innovative and interesting people in, in the world of magic. Uh, Dan Harlan on the right and Sarah Ella Fant on the left and Sarah will explain the name uh, as we uh, as we talk. Uh, Dan is sort of world famous for his, his magical creations and, and travels the globe performing, teaching fantastic magic. Uh, he's, uh, you know, performed cutting edge miracles and and fine magic and is among a very select group who if you watch Penn and Teller, he fooled them. Uh, well done, Dan, for that. Absolutely magic. Uh, well, that's a silly thing to say. Of course it's magic. And, uh, and Dan has also consulted top professionals, Kevin James, Jeff McBride, Keith Barry, David Copperfield, the list goes on and on and on. And Sarah, Sarah Elephant. Uh, Sarah is a well-renowned, I'm going to try and say this correctly, mnemonist. Perfect. Did I get that right? got it right i got it right which means a memory expert okay uh, her, her eclectic talents require an assortment of titles performer author artist speaker teacher and more so welcome along sarah uh, i think a good way to introduce dan is to play a video of one of his fantastic creations performed by the man himself when I was very young, something magical happened to me. My parents let me stay up late. Well, that wasn't the most magical thing that ever happened to me, but I was so young at the time that I was pretty impressed by it. And I remember that my mother and I were sitting on the back porch of my family's house, and the full moon was just rising up over the horizon. And my mom told me that the moon and the stars and all of the planets have magical properties. And I still believe that to this day. And using this napkin, I'm going to make a picture of the full moon. But to make it more interesting for you and a bit more challenging for me, I'm going to try to do it with one tear. A single tear to make a perfect circle. Now, I'm not going to finish tearing. Instead, I'd like you to see that the piece is still connected. The center of the napkin, which I want you to watch very closely as I take it out. I'm going to leave that center right here, so don't take your eyes off of it. But let's check to see how well I've done to see if I've made a picture of the full moon with uh, that single tear. Oh yeah, well that's a pretty good circle with one tear. Um, do you see the man in the moon? <laughs> that's me. I know it's a silly joke, but I just thought I'd lighten the mood a little bit. Now as I said, the moon was rising up over the horizon. But I turned to the right and there was the first star just kind of twinkling into view. And I asked my mom if all the stars have magical properties, well, what about that first star? She told me it's the most magical of all. If you make a wish on it, your wish comes true. And she taught me a poem. You might be familiar with it. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have this wish, I wish tonight. And I wish that I could do magic. And my wish, came true. But you know, there's something that I should have wished for. I was so young at the time, it didn't occur to me. But let's take a look at this circle, and I'll show you what I should have wished for. You see, I should have wished to be just like that star. Because then, I could have whatever I wished. And I could also give people whatever they wished. And I've made this star just for you. So you may have whatever you wish, within reason. <laughs> hey, that guy's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty, pretty damn good, yeah. That, actually, I'm going to go off script here, Dan. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's a question that I should have put, uh, which is, where did you get the inspiration for that trick? Because it, it's fabulous and just sort of left to center. It just, how did it evolve? 
Yeah, well, uh, actually, the inspiration for that came from uh, Ken Brook effects uh, called Squirkle, oh, wow. uh, as performed by uh, Gene Anderson. And when I saw Gene Anderson perform that, I was fascinated by the idea of the shapes changing. And I was always fascinated by math and geometry. Uh, and I figured that there had to be a way of doing it ungimmicked. And I did come up with a way to do the, the you know, squircle, but it just isn't as impressive. So I, I decided to apply it to other geometric shapes. This was all when I was 14 years old, by the way. Wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been quite a while. I've, let's see, 14, I've been performing that for at least five years now. Yeah, I was about to say five, five, six years. <laughs> so, Dan, uh, you're performer, writer, teacher, consultant, creator, lecturer, uh, what don't you do? I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> not, not very much. <laughs> Brilliant answer. Uh, magicians in the audience, uh, be aware that, uh, will be aware that Dan performed every trick in the book. Uh, that relates to a set of eight volumes of book called the Tarbell Course in Magic. Eight volumes, Dan. Uh, how many tricks are in eight volumes of Tarbell? Yeah, well, it's it's over twelve hundred. That's over twelve hundred tricks. Magic. Yeah, and you performed every one of them. Not only did you perform every one of them, you put your own spin. On the, yeah, and not only did itself. I like re rewrite them and rescript them, but I also built all of the props because not all of them existed, uh, and so I redesigned them and and then I recostumed and put new music and re uh, production values with every single one of them. So, so how long did that take? Uh, well, the entire project took five years to film it, and that is five years doing basically a weekly show. So every every week I would have um, on average six new items uh, in the show. And uh, so that was over the course of five years. It was it was pretty difficult to do. Uh, there were a couple of times that we had to take a, a couple of breaks because I just got worn out doing the whole thing. Uh, but it was really, really enjoyable in general. Dan, Dan, I host one show a week here and I take part in another show a week. And I tend to do the same trick on both because they're both <laughs> in different time frames in different countries. I have to come up with a new trick one new trick a week. <laughs> oh, how did you do it? Absolutely uh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's done, I mean, it's done uh, the way that you do any kind of uh, television production. Um, so it's a very, very organized schedule. Uh, all of the pieces are chosen. Everything is planned out. Uh, then I get the nuts and bolts down, and then I start adding in the the, the decorative elements and the scripting elements. And for me, uh, you know, scripting is pretty easy to do because I've been a, an actor longer than I've been a magician. And so uh, it's just a matter of understanding how you get from the beginning, establishing everything, create an interesting story arc and wrap everything up. And so it, once you get the process down, it, you could apply it to absolutely everything. It's part of what I do as a consultant is I come in. Uh, and help people understand that the the basic thing that you want to do is start with a good trick. Any trick will do. Start with a good trick. Then you have to start putting your own personality and your own spin on it. Onto it. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, I know you love to travel, uh, mm -hmm. and previously globally, but obviously the pandemic put pay to that. So uh, how do you plan to adapt? Have, well, obviously you've adapted over the last couple of years, but what yep. are you going to do going forward? Are you going to do a bit of everything now, or are you getting back to traveling full time? Well, not full time, well, but yeah, not full time. Uh, yeah, initially uh, okay. the uh, the adaptation was pretty simple because I was uh, I was employed full time with Penguin Magic, and so we just took everything into the studio okay. and recorded things directly to camera and that kind of stuff. Uh, then I started to do some online lectures and performances, but uh, as much as I enjoy them and as much as I think anybody enjoys them, it you know magic is best delivered live. And so uh, really having that ability to interact with people again is great. It's just starting. So, I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but I have been doing a few more live performances uh, locally and regionally. Uh, I've gone out on a couple of lecture tours, but the more uh, ability, the more opportunity that I have to travel and perform live, the more I'm going to do it. Uh, it I, just, I, I just enjoy it too much. So uh, I have to do it. Dan, one of our, our audience has just asked if you're going to be sticking around in the magicians only section after we uh, we tell the muggles where the exit sign is. So yeah, oh sure, to... absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll stick around. Okay, that's fantastic. Right now, as they say in Facebook land, you have to do your research. So 
I typed Dan Harlan into Google and up came a thing called the Minotaur magazine, half bull, half magic. Yeah. What's that all about? In uh, the well, of comedians. Uh, <laughs> sir, no, back, back in the, uh, in the late eighties, uh, a friend who was a member of the local IBM ring that I was also a member of uh, in Ohio, uh, we decided that there was no need for any new magic publications. And so that's why we decided to do one. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we started uh, the Minotaur magazine, uh, which we had uh, a, a catchphrase for it that was half magic, half bull yeah. for the Minotaur. Yeah. And so we found uh, our friends who didn't have an opportunity to publish things and other magicians that we would run into at Fector's and at other major conventions that we were attending that just had this great stuff and they really didn't have an outlet for it. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that it was mostly non-card items, so mostly things that were different. You know, we, we would we would try to avoid cards and coins, one card, one coin item per issue, but we really wanted things that were unusual. And so we published that for um, about seven years solid. And over that time, uh, I became very busy, a little bit more successful, and so it was difficult for me to devote my time to it. Uh, and my friend, uh, Marv Leventhal, who was the co-publisher of it, uh, he became very busy with his job. And so we found it extremely difficult to finish the whole thing. Eventually, we did finish it only a few years ago by putting out a video issue, uh, the Minotaur final issue on video, which I wrote the whole movie. It's a movie uh, script that's really fascinating that involves magic in it. Uh, we finally wrapped the whole thing up. So technically, there were eight years, eight volumes, four issues per volume. Uh, really great stuff. It's still available uh, if you Next want. To, <laughs> yep, uh, if you want to go, at, anytime I talk about it, I let people know because when when you say something's kind of cool, uh, maybe people haven't seen it or heard about it. So if you go to library.com, and you should be as a magician familiar with that. That's L Y B R A Y. Yep. Uh, library.com and look up the Minotaur. You can get all the back issues and you can also get a uh, download video um, for the last uh, issue as well. Okay, can you give me 10 minutes to talk among yourselves while I just go? Well, you do that while you download <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> Dan, you recently moved to uh, Clayton, North Carolina. That's right. Clayton, uh, North tell Carolina, tell us a new bit about home your... of magic. Yeah, tell us your new, about your new home and uh, your plans for Clayton. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I've been here one year, and uh, you are going to get a chance to talk to Sarah Ella about how that all happened. Uh, but we have formed a company, uh, and you know she'll tell you more about that. Uh, we've we've got this new company that's a magic production company as well as memory work, which is her specialty. Uh, and we are uh, putting out some new material, uh, some some published eBooks that I've put out, uh, some new magic tricks, some new memory art. And then we're also putting together a big magic festival for this August. So if anybody happens to be in uh, the North Carolina area in August or make plans to, uh, we've got a really fun idea for the festival where we're involving the public more. So the public and magicians get to mix together and it'll be kind of fun. Uh, but that is all at themystictower.com. So you check that one out. Sure. Right. But, uh, I don't think Ryanair actually have flights to, uh, to that area. Sorry, that's a joke for the UK people who <laughs> fly there. Where, wherever they fly to, they, they never fly to the same place you want to go to anyway. <laughs> um, you have a, an enormous back catalogue, uh, but you've mentioned your plans for the future. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Are yeah, you going absolutely. to be more creating? And it will be a lot more creating, but uh, I do have quite a backlog of ideas in my idea file, what I call my brain box, and it's a physical box that has all of the work that I've thought about doing, uh, and then our new collaborations are very inspirational, so I have uh, I have a ton of work, which I can tell you, it's going to be the best work I've ever done. And the reason I say that in all humility is I just get better and better the more I do magic. It's like anybody else. You know, we, I, I, and, and after having done Tar Bell for five years, it, it, it just has taught me so much about how to actually hone in and perfect all of the ideas I've ever had. So uh, I'm very excited to now have the time to work on those and, and finally get them out to the, uh, to the magic uh, public at, at large. Uh, so I'm really thrilled because I've, I've finally written my best writing on equivocation, uh, my best writing on the Stebbins deck, uh, and I've started to produce 
new magic tricks independently. So outside of uh, any other distributor. Again, all that stuff is on the Mystic Tower. So please take take a little time to check that out. A, a project for you. All the tricks in the jinx. There we go. In the <laughs> jinx. You know, and, and that's, <laughs> that would, yeah, I would know. I would absolutely love it because at at heart, I'm you know I'm I'm a mentalist, and so we kind of <laughs> yeah. on the to do the whole thing. Who knows? Maybe I will. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to use an old term here. We're going to make a trunk call to uh, <laughs> the person <laughs> next to you, Sarah Ella Fant. Uh, where did you uh, first meet Dan Hall? So I was actually doing a lecture, a virtual lecture online, and Dan had purchased tickets to my lecture. And then um, I got sick and the lecture had to be postponed. And Dan wasn't able to make the rescheduling, but I found out that he had contacted the club that was going to be hosting the lecture and told them that they could keep the money from his ticket as a donation, which I thought was really nice. So I reached out to him to say, well, next time I do a lecture online, your ticket's on me. I'd love for you to be there. And we he messaged me back right away. We started video chatting on Facebook. And I have a theatrical background as well. So we both approach magic really from the same same angle and look at magic the same way. So we started talking uh -huh. and I had had this idea, you know, we're on this virtual medium with Zoom and these TV screens across the computer. And I wanted us or I wanted someone to travel via Zoom. So to go from one Zoom screen to another Zoom screen on a live broadcast. And I brought this idea up to Dan and he had had the same idea. So we just started talking about how to make that happen. And before I knew it, a couple months later, we were performing together and um, I traveled from my home in North Carolina to his home in Ohio via Zoom instantaneously. So I walked from one screen straight into his screen and then I, I traveled back. And when I traveled back, something happened, which caused his house to implode and he was thrown into the vast emptiness. And so he was just in the middle of this black nowhere. Thankfully, we got him out of the vast emptiness. I don't know if y'all know, Dan Harlan almost got stuck in the vast emptiness for eternity, but we were able to pull him out and he came into my office in North Carolina and we finished the show from there. And it was just a lot of fun. And I don't, I mean, he went back to Ohio a couple of times, but his house was imploded. So what was he gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> you have to blame the penguin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what you are this word that I wrote down earlier and I've uh, got it on the other page. Okay, you want me you to help you? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. What, what influenced what influenced your fascination with uh, with numbers and memory? <laughs> Yeah, so I was reading Corinda actually and came across the 13th, I was reading the 13th Steps of Mentalism and I came across the amazing memory test. And it seemed kind of like hokum, but I recognized it because when I was a kid, my father would have me study using these mnemonic techniques, which is finding ways to make images from words and using wordplay to remember and to learn things. And so I said, huh, I kind of think that this actually works. So I gave it a shot and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and so I started getting every book I could on mnemonics. And I mean, Aristotle wrote about mnemonics. It goes all the way back. And um, it's really something that the invention of writing, if you study it, writing came about because of mnemonics was, you know, finding this visual way to represent what we were saying. So um, we all have a little bit of a mnemonist inside of us. <laughs> um, whenever people talk about doing magic with numbers, a lot of people shut down. Yeah. Oh, no, not another math trick. What, how do you manage to make numbers fun? Well, for memorizing numbers, it's all mnemonics at the, at the core are fun um, because the whole idea is that you're making these silly stories in your mind that help you retain information. When I'm performing with pie, I love, I love to perform with actual pie. So I have memorized um, the first 500 digits of pi, and usually I perform with the first 100. And we have this great routine we do where I am going through and reciting pi while Dan pies me in the face. And at the bottom of each pan of pi is one of the numbers of pi. So you can see that I'm getting it right. Um, we also, for pi day last year, 
um, we had 10 clowns that were going around and pieing themselves as I recited pie. And so that was a lot of fun. So throw pie in there. You, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, is that, is that clown video linked to uh, from the Mystic Tower? Is that uh, linked to through my numbers? It is not, but we can definitely we, get it up We there. should do that because, yeah, we have that we have that up and we'd have to give them the direct link to it. Um, if you find us on the Mystic Tower on Facebook, it, the video is there. Yeah, um, the video. The video to our Pi Day performance. It's also on my personal social media, Sarah Elephant. Yeah, I mean, I I struggle with remembering Pi to uh, to, to to eleven places, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to five hundred is is a, a mammoth. Out, you're going to tell us about that. But in first, tell us about comics. Yeah. So one of the uh, I'm an artist and I create comics. And when I first started studying mnemonics, you know, there are all these amazing books that tell you memorize picture this in your mind now imagine this thing happening and as a graphic novelist someone who was making these comic books telling stories i realized that instead of telling people what to picture it would be so much easier to actually provide the pictures and so comics the, um, the medium of comics is a really great way to form memory paths if you're a comic book reader you probably know that you can kind of shut your eye and picture the story on the page and you know where it falls and how it flows and so it's a great way to memorize things a lot of my work is actually taught in kind of comic book form instead of a typical book that you're reading the text uh, the, the next question comes from a friend of ours who's actually in the audience Gunnar uh, because he's from Iceland so obviously his native language is Icelandic now most magicians out there will be aware of your memory arts project uh, yes. which was to to learn mnemonica uh, which for non-magicians out there is a system. Uh, I won't go any further than that, but say you wanted to memorize a random deck of cards, could you use the same technique and could other languages, people who don't speak English, do the same with your system? Absolutely. The memory arts has been sold in countries all over the world. And because it's so highly visual, it's something that you certainly can use. If you use um, the numbers that we use, like one, two, three, written the way that they're written, the locations are designed to look like the numbers. And so it doesn't, it's not based on language. Now there are is some wordplay that um, I employ as well to make it even stronger to remember, but we have people of all different languages that have read the memory arts and that are using these techniques to memorize any stack. It teaches Aronson and Mnemonica simultaneously, but it also teaches the system to actually memorize the cards. Okay, I've got a difficult task for you now. So you teach and lecture on memory and learning. Yes. How long would it take you to teach a dunce like me how to remember pi to 500 places? Um, one session. It really <laughs> would not. It would not take too much work at all. It's behind. It's the other one behind it's you. You're looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I have the first 100 digits of pi are in a single image and it takes you through and it's a story that has nine different parts of this story. It's a comic story of nine different parts. Really, it would take about 20 minutes to learn the first 100. From there, it takes a little bit longer because I haven't actually supplied the art for the next 400, but I've given the pieces to make the story in your mind. So I suggest that people take about a hundred places at a time and then go on and make those stories for the next 100. So 20 minutes a day for five days, you'd have 100 down. Right, okay. 500 well, down, 500 I'll down be on your down. website tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> and that is the numbers. So it's yeah. numbers with an M at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, <laughs> what are your plans for a post pandemic future? Um, my plans are much in line with what Dan was saying. Um, we have started the Mystic Tower and right now my focus is really um, on MagicCon, which I'm super excited that we're going to be hosting this magic festival here in Clayton. Um, I, I've had a dream of having a magic company um, in North Carolina and to have Kind of a brick and mortar shop with also a theater and a place to perform and bring people in for lessons and lectures and also a museum there's nowhere in the world that houses all of the mnemonic or memory history of the world a lot of this stuff from these great mnemonists of history is it's in the basements of universities and isn't being seen by people 
So this is kind of the first step in having this actual physical space where we can have a museum and theater space and a shop. Um, we've opened our website just this about a month ago um, and where we've moved both of our work onto the single site. And that's the first step in making a physical spot yeah. here in Clayton that um, will be a place that hopefully everyone will come and visit us. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, Lee, one, one of our audience, Lee Alex, has put the link to your convention Wonderful. already in the chat. So awesome. Uh, Thank you, Lee. So they're, 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 they're nice guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the onesie, Sarah. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> tell us about it. So I did a TED Talk. I don't know if y'all are familiar with TED Talks, but it's um, a it's a medium where people can go and they just talk about interesting things, successes that they've had throughout life. So I had the opportunity to do a TED Talk and I wanted to be memorable. I was talking about mnemonics and memory and how, um, memory and education specifically in daily life. And I wanted people to, I wanted my talk to stand apart from everyone else. Um, you, you, everybody, if this um, set is completely the same, you stand on this red carpet and um, have the TEDx logo in the background. And so every TED talk looks the same. And I know that mnemonics are visual and it's based on the way things look. And I wanted something that was going to be strange and funny and set in, set me apart from everyone else that was also giving these very similar looking talks and I discovered these elephant onesies and I was like well that's certainly memorable and you know they say an elephant never forgets and um it was my grandfather's favorite animal so a little bit of paying homage to him but um I, so I wanted to find this character that was memorable and I did the TED talk and it certainly was memorable because I was in an elephant onesie. People would say, oh yeah, I've seen that talk. It's with the girl wearing an elephant. And so it kind of, it stuck. I started per always performing that way, my, doing my lectures that way. Obviously I interview that way. Um, Dan did not realize that I was not really a tiny elephant. He was shocked. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then uh, when, we, uh, when, when we started to uh, work together, uh, I suggested that, you know, she embrace the character entirely and go with a stage name, which is where the, the uh, stage name came from. So it, it all just works now. And, and it really is a, a very, very memorable, good character. Uh, that's fun and then I work uh, when I work with her I work in character as a giant rat it's it's still being developed but, but it's hilarious for me <laughs> well, well for someone like me who tends to forget what day it is uh, I will remember the elephant onesie forever yeah yeah uh, thank you both very much just finally just to Dan the penguin years I miss those Christmas specials yeah, so please, do I. Please create something like that again. Well, you know, Scott uh, Scott uh, Alexander has been doing his things independently. I haven't had a yeah. chance to watch any of them, um, but he did most of the writing for those specials. And then I would do all of, you know, like the uh, set design and props, and then we would do a rehearsal and then perform it. They were extremely challenging to do, to put together that much material uh, and then get it, because you know, he would come in only a couple of days before. And then we would go in and the first few we did were 100% live, which was crazy. Um, but uh, I would love to go back and do something like that. It, and the hardest part was that it was concurrent with the Tarbell project. So I was oh, already was worn out yeah. by the time we did them. But uh, yeah, I'd love to go back and do some more. Well, you would never have known by watching them that you would <laughs> Thank you ever so much, uh, Dan Harlan and Sarah Elephant. And you're welcome. Thank you. from everybody out there, please. Thanks, and everybody. Real pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, this Please is stick around with us and we'll talk to you later. We'll be here. And moving back to the magic, uh, just to mention again, if uh, you want to uh, donate something to our ongoing project, which is uh, hopefullyukraine.net, please do so. The money all goes to the best possible route to the people that need it most. Anyway, uh, we are moving over to California to a, a very, very good friend of mine, a fantastic magician, the weirdest man in the world, the man who not only uh, is, is, is an author and a magician and has even written Tom and Jerry episodes, uh, he is just an outstanding, 
creator, but I believe he's probably going to do something weird and wacky for us, which he normally does. Charles Snyder, hi there, mate. Come on in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forgive me, everybody. It's been a very hectic morning, a kind of a spooky morning. Um, me- oh, it is such an honor to be here. You two, you know who I'm talking about. And when I saw those pies smash in your face like 108 times, and uh, I can't, a day doesn't, okay. <laughs> I'm kind of spooked out because I live out here in the country and there's some weird people and they, uh, they're kind of suspicious of we magicians. They, yeah. um, they think it's some sort of a cult. They think that I am actually a cult, but um, nothing of a sort. However, I'm kind of creeped out because just this morning I was at having a little, little breakfast and this lady, we call her Granny Haggis. She's a local soothsayer, witch, crone, nightmarish, gap to the... Yeah! She saw me and she said, it's the wizard. Yeah! Yeah! She gave me this piece of paper. And this isn't even funny. This is not like a joke. This is not a joke. I, oh, did I tell you though that I... I'm kind of guilty. I only have one small vice, though. It's not cigarettes. I don't. I want just one small vice. I. I. I just. Uh, I just have what. <laughs> so she gives this piece of paper, and it says, "And I just want to entertain you folks today. You know, I don't want to get weird. I don't want anything destructive or nightmarish or out of a." true horror movie. <laughs> I just want to, you know, I just want to, oh man, I'm so hungry. I am so hungry. Look at it. But my mother said the germs, the germs. And I'm... As I said, we're going to keep it light, light and airy. Oh, just right out of a little children's party. <laughs> In fact, let's get the unicorn going. The greatest act of levitation ever known. Thank you for that thunderous golf applause I just did not hear. (laughs) The note said, "Uh uh-oh, three minutes and counting. Foolish wizard, now's your turn for thy eyeballs to crackle and burn. That sounds horrible. I like my eyes. I'm an artist. I love color. I, I won't want them to to crackle. <laughs> That's very weird that she gave me that creepy prophecy. But let's just forget all about that. Let's forget it never happened. It's a strange coinky dink, though, because... <laughs> My little bit for today, which I salvaged out of loose parts, has to do with eyeballs. (laughs) So I hope that none of you have anything like a, uh, you know, like a, like a, you know, injury to the eyeball uh, phobia like I do. I mean, I was nine years old when my parents took me to see Un Chien Andalou, the Andalusian dog, by Dali and Junwek. Let's, okay, let's not discuss it. Now, where were we? Let me, oh. First of all, I want you people to know that that you've got to keep your eye on your money. You know, you, you've got to be sure that you keep your eye on your money because you always have to keep your, be sure to keep your eye on your. <laughs> now, here's the most curious thing I want to show you. So curious. Oh, I love the coin magic. Oh, I love the coin magic. Keep your eye on this coin. See the Kennedy. I want you, I want you to keep your eye on the coin, okay? I want you to keep your eye on the yeah, yeah, what the heck? That's just 
this 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 coin Do you know what I do with these? Do you know where I keep them? Can you imagine where I keep? These are not just glass eyes, little spheres. They're Victorian glass orbs. People don't know that in the old days, glass eyes were not round. They were more disc. You are, <laughs> which is why I keep here in this weird little pouch, my great grandfather's box. He would keep his glass eyes in here. He would call it his Aikido box. One would go in, two would go in, and then three would go in, just like that. He would put them in the little box. He would shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it. And then he would take the box and he would slam it into his eye. <laughs> and out of the other eye, the eyeballs would come. Of course, he could always take that. He could put it there and he could just shove it back into his eye. Now, oh, but sometimes, sometimes I have a problem getting them out and I have to use this uh, very sophisticated medical device. Now, I don't want any of you to be alarmed that I'm about to shove this into my eye socket. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to disinfect it. I got this from the barber shop. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's good though. It's a, uh, It, there now I won't get no germs. Oh, did I mention that I had money to burn? I mean, seriously though, not only do I try to keep my eye on my money, but you know, as usual, folks, we got the money to burn. <laughs> now, this is where the thing gets more difficult for me. I was thinking that if I could just, if I could just. <laughs> if I could just take the tool and just ah! Ah! Oh, God! Ah! 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 Oh dear. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> I want an Aikido, an Aikido box as well. You have to tell me where you get those. Fantastic and totally surreal. And thank you, Charles. As always, I don't even know where I am. Oh yes, we're staying in the USA. And we're moving over to a uh, magician who's been uh, along for the ride for weeks and weeks and weeks, always telling us how we should do things. So we've challenged him to actually do some magic himself. <laughs> Come on down, Bill, join us. <clears throat> How are we all doing? Well, I got a bag of balloons. Usually I have an audience member pick them, but we're on Zoom, so I'm going to take one. <clears throat> balloon and we all know what happens to a balloon
and you take a nice needle to it. Thank you. That's all I got right now. Thanks, I show Bill. you it was real. Thanks, Bill. Oh, yes. That's what we wanted to see. <laughs> right. Staying uh, that side of the pond and moving a little bit, uh, I think, a little bit further north to uh, Alan Fisher territory. Come in, Alan. Greetings, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me be part of the show today. I'm I'm still a little little terrified having to go this close to after Charles, because um, he's he he's just scary. Uh, I'm I'm going to try to do something a little calmer. Uh, he's 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 wonderful, but he's scaring me. So I'm going to be a little calmer, and I'm going to do something with cards. But I'm going to need two volunteers. Uh, any two folks that uh, Stuart would like to, to unmute and bring up, I don't care. Oh, but Isabel, thank you so much. That would be just Hello. wonderful. You, you, you shall be number one. And ah, uh, my friend Jill, how are you? It is so good to see you again. And oh, you God. will both be my wonderful little volunteers. Uh, let me switch to my other camera so that you can see my cards. Now, let's see, Jill, I think we'll have, we'll have you play the pick a card part of it. Isabel, you are going to be the magician for the day because it's my day off. I don't actually have to do anything today. Uh, All right. I like All right. this. Yeah, this is, this is where I just get to sit back and <laughs> think of me as the Vanna White of this routine. I just point at stuff. <laughs> I... I, I have no real function as a magician today. Jill is our wonderful volunteer. She's the studio audience member. I'm Vanna White, and Isabel is our magician. That will be fun. Uh, Jill, I'm just going to, uh, you know, be sliding my finger on. Tell me when you'd like me to stop. 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 Uh, okay. Let's see. Does that, does that when there seem pretty good to you? Or? That's fine. That's fine. Wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. The one. that, that will be the one. Now, uh, Isabel, as the magician, I need you to turn away so you cannot see what the selected card is because you're going to be finding it later. I'm not even going to look, but Isabel, you and everyone else oh, should right. be able to see the card. Uh, all right, Isabel, you may uh, you may come back. We're going to bury the card in the middle, and this is where you get to be the wizard because you, my dear, and if you were here, you'd get to do this yourself. I'll be helping, but you're going to be the one who will... be my hands. Yes. And you, you are going to roll the Die of Destiny. It, it is called the Die of Destiny because, you know, normally when you, you roll the dice, you get to immediately know what the numbers are. But this is a very special one that we're going to be using today. Um... I hope you can kind of figure out at this point why I'm making six piles. Uh, well, I, I, okay, I don't have enough to go around. Um, Isabel, uh, I've got a few cards. Up. None of these are yours, are they? I don't have to, not, none of these are the ones that you picked. I don't think so. Right. No. Okay, don't wonderful. Look familiar. We'll, we'll get, great, we'll get rid of those. We have six piles. And, and Isabel, can you figure out why there are six? Huh? huh? If you're rolling the die of destiny? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. You're going to be so much better than the person last night. <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute. But first, I must show you the die of Ooh. destiny. Ooh. But when I roll the die, you have to tell me what number I've rolled. And what number did I roll? It is That's your a destiny four. to tell me. That's a four. That's Obviously, wonderful. Yeah. 
As I said, last night was not so good. I, I rolled it, and the guy said seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't quite comprehend the idea of a cube, but that's okay. You're so much more in the ball than he was. So four is our number. Uh, would you like me to start counting in from this side or from this side, yo? You're right. right. Okay, so from your left, that's be this yeah. way. Yes. So we go one, two, three, four. Yes. We'll get rid of all the others. We don't need them. We're only going to deal with these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, uh, I got some extras that I think I can get rid of, Jill. I don't think we need to worry about No, these. they're fine. Not wonderful. Once again, Isabel, the world's greatest die rolling magician. Here we go. And what number? It's a two. It's a two. It's a two. Am I coming in from? Yes, uh, that way. I guess that would be your le right or your left. My right. So from over here. Yeah. One, two. Exactly. Goodbye. 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 Jill, it is the moment of truth. You were the one that selected the card. What was your card? Do you recall? The Four of Spades. Isabel, the magic, the wonder of the Die of Destiny, and the power of your magic brings us to the Four of Spades. I thank you both so much for helping me out, and a huge round of applause for Jill and the wizardry of Isabel. <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. Alan and Isabel, don't go away because I'm going to actually get you involved in something a little bit later on in, in, a, in a short time. So, but before that, uh, moving down to, I think he's based himself in Florida now, uh, another fantastic magician, Bruce. Bruce Yoskin, come on in. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um... Alan, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to do something tonight that I've actually done twice before, uh, virtually. I did it once uh, here on Open Mic a few months ago, and I did it not too long ago on uh, Tommy's show, and uh, with spectacularly bad results. So at Kevin's suggestion, who said, get back up on the horse and do it again, I'm going to do it again. But I did a little research and found out what went wrong before, I think. This is all about intuition. And typically, I start off by having an assistant and saying, um, do you believe in intuition? And usually I get a pretty quick answer and, and that's usually yes. Well, as it turns out, I probably never really explained what intuition is. So uh, I did a little research on no less a uh, a, a wonderful um, reference called Wikipedia. And I found out that, um, and I'm going to read this. Intuition is the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. Now, in the past, I always told my assistant, take your time, um, get a feel for what's going on. This evening, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So, uh, Stuart, if you have somebody that uh, would be... Ah, Rolf, how are you? Oh, hi, Bruce. I'm fine. Thanks. How are Good. you? Nice to see you. Rolf, do you believe in intuition? Well, you you might convince me. Okay, well, let, would you like to test it? Sure. Okay. I'm going to switch to a different camera here. And... Uh, this is done with a deck of cards. No surprise when it comes to me. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, mix them up a little bit. And then uh, Ralph, I'm not going to use the whole deck because that would take forever. I'll just use a small group mm -hmm. and mix these up as well. Keep in mind that if I were doing this trick normally with you, we would be face to face across the table. This works best um, when it's in person. 
And perhaps why, since I've only done it twice virtually before, it failed. Anyway, Rolf, I would give you this group of cards that I cut away from the deck and I would say, Rolf, uh, look through the cards and select one that kind of speaks to you and you would like to use for the remainder of this exercise. And you don't have to do that too quickly. Just find one you really like and tell me when you've done that. Okay. Okay. I most important thing is remember because 25 okay. minutes from now at the end of the trick uh, if you haven't uh, we'll be in trouble anyway i'm going to shuffle them up a little more i would give them to you and i would say rolf i want you to put down two piles um deal the cards down onto the table would you like me to deal singly one at a time by twos by threes you tell me single one by one okay make it harder for Bruce. so we're going to if there are an odd number, I'll just take the odd fill the round. They're even numbers. And since I also found that sometimes I get confused with the packets, we're going to number or letter, as it were. Now, Rolf, what I want you to do is look at these two packets of cards. Don't mm -hmm. take a lot of time. Just tell me quickly which one you think your card is in. B. A or B. Packet B, please. Packet B. Okay, Rolf, here are the one, two, three, four, eight cards from packet B. Is your card there? No. Okay, we're going to do this three times, by the way. It's kind of like a warm up exercise. Okay. And then the big test uh, comes later. So I'm going to separate the cards uh, into another two packets. This time, I'm going to give you the opportunity to choose which packet is going to be A and which packet is going to be B, your choice, A or B, A or B. Take this one for A. Okay, that's A, this is B. Yeah. Now, looking at those two packs, Rolf, quickly, make a decision as to which one you think contains your card. B. B, B again. Rolf, is your card there? Unfortunately not. No. Okay. Well, that's 0 for 2. Uh, I will tell you that very seldom does anybody go 0 for 3, and very seldom does anybody go 3 for 3. Well, there's no issue about the 3 for 3. That's not going to happen. So let's just see if we can't get you something here. Well, let's start that again. Sorry. I've also never done this over this many thousands of miles. I'm giving myself all kinds of excuses. Uh, Ralph, A or B? B. That's B. This is A. Ralph, look at the two packets of cards. Tell me quickly which one has your card. A. A. Check it out. Is it there? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. That's great. All right, so that's that's it for the um, for the warm up exercise. Now here comes the big one, Rolf. And in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to as I riffle down the cards like this. Somewhere in there, you tell me to stop and use your best intuition. To determine where your card may be. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Stop. Right here. Is that good? Okay. You want me to add some, take some away? No, that's fine. Okay. All right. So let's go back in history for a minute here. Uh, had you been sitting across from me, I would have given you some cards. You would have shuffled them up. You would have put them in several piles. We would have done these little warm up exercises. Uh, you would have done, by the way, one, one out of three is, is kind of average. So you can feel pretty good about that. Then the big test came where I asked you to um, stop me in the middle of my riffling to see if we could arrive at your previously select, um, selected card. So Rob, for the first time, announce to me, because I certainly don't know it, and everybody else, because you didn't share this with anybody, the name of the card that you have been remembering. Uh, it was the Eight of Spades. The Eight of Spades. Okay. Kevin, keep your fingers crossed. How great would it be, Ross, if you <laughs> cut directly 
to the aid of spades. That would be great. <laughs> that would be just terrific. Yes! Yeah! Oh, thank you very much. Kevin, back to you. <clears throat> Fantastic, Bruce. <laughs> right, we are getting towards, edging towards the end of the show. It's been a long one because we had a fantastic interview section in the middle. Uh, we're going to end up on a video from a stand-up uh, performance of uh, one of our, our regular magicians who pops it every now and again. But just before we close with Phil Pearson and his stand-up show, uh, I'm going to do something uh, a little bit different for a change. So I spoke to uh, Alan and Isabel and said, do you want to help me? So do you want to come back into the room under here or over there or beside me or underneath or wherever you're going to appear? So we got Alan and we just need this. There we go. We got Isabel. Hello. Now, <clears throat> Isabel, are you from the US of A as well? No, I'm from Canada. You're from Canada. Oh, God, no, sorry. I didn't want to insult you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sorry yeah so isabel from canada and alan fisher from tennessee in tennessee, the usa where the best whiskey comes from <laughs> <laughs> so alan you are a bit of a, an actor yourself aren't you you're a performer and an actor and you know how to act so isabel you're going to try and determine something that alan does shortly so this, is, this has not been set up, has it, Alan? Nothing, nothing prearranged. No. Or no. And Isabel, no, you don't know not. what the hell's going to happen, do you? No, no idea. Because what we're going to do is what we here in the UK call the game of charades, and you in America call charades for some obscure reason. So I have got a book, which I'll go to the overhead camera so you can see what it is. And it's called Media Charades or Charades. And I'll just explain, and it's explained on the very first page there. Uh, can you see the uh, the different icons? So you've got a book icon, a film icon, a game icon, a television icon, and an app icon. Mm -hmm. And well, what was the last one? The app. That's an app. Oh, oh, an app. Oh, okay. App. A P P, as in on your phone. Got you. <laughs> So this is media charade. So it's not like the old days where you just had a book or a film or something. Uh, this, it could be a book, a film, an app. Uh, uh, what else? A television show, uh, a game, etc. Okay. And if I flick through the book like this, you can see if I stop there, you can see that that one, what's that? Pokemon, which was a game and a television show, and Resident Evil, which was a game and a film. And if we look a few more, there we've got... Uh, What's that one? Avengers, which was a book and a film, or Facebook, which is just an app, or The Matrix, which was just a film, and Sonic the Hedgehog, which was just an app. So, firstly, Isabel, what you need to do is do what you did a little bit earlier, close your eyes, turn around so you can't see, and Alan is going to yeah. choose something out of the book, and he's going to try and tell you what it is without saying it but by acting it out okay oh. are you ready for this alan so we're just oh, going to yes i'm just going to flick through the book and you just say stop stop okay there i'll go to the other camera so you can probably see it better so you've got um, two options you can either have that option there or that option there so which one do you want? If I call that A and that B, A or B? A um, or B? We'll go with A. That's A, yeah? Yeah. So you know that it's it's one of them? Yeah, I know you it's know one of them. what it is. And I know what it is, yes. So, Isabel, turn around and see if you can <laughs> get what... So as in all games of charades, uh, you have to ask Alan what it is, what the genre is. So I'll let you the two at it. Go on. Go, go. Is it talk to Alan. Is it a movie? Is it also a video game? <clears throat> it's only a movie. Is it a horror movie? 
Is it? Alan, you can actually act some of it out if you want. Yes, yes, I, 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 I think I'm going to because Isabel has a, a a little bit of a background in magic. I'm going to not say anything else, but I will act out. <laughs> Excellent. I would say the Fantastic Four, but <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I'll give you one more go, Alan, to to act it out for Isabel. Wait, with red and blue. <laughs> Brilliant. Jaws. <laughs> 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 As you can see, this is not easy over Zoom, is it? <laughs> so, what we're going to do next is Isabel. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do you want to let Isabel into the, the movie? Uh, the the movie was called The Matrix. And the little magic trick I did with the four coins is known as a coin matrix. And of course, in the matrix, oh! you've got to eat the red or the blue pill. <laughs> of course, of course. Now it's super clear. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. So, as you can see, it, it, it ain't that easy, is it? It's, it's terribly now, hard. We're going to try it again with me. But this time, you're going to try and pass me the information about whatever you choose without saying anything at all. Oh, okay. okay. So, <laughs> so let's give this a go. Uh, and, and to make it more difficult for me, so firstly, who's going to choose the, uh, the, 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 the subject? Do you want to choose it, Isabel, like you did before? Yeah, yeah, Isabel, let's uh, have Isabel choose the subject. Uh, we'll let you go, Alan. Thank you very much for your acting. That's fantastic. You can just leave me and Isabel here. So, Isabel, I'm going to blindfold. I just need to make sure I know where everything is. So there's the book, so I can pick it up. And what I'm going to do is show you something out of the book to that camera there. But I'm going to be blindfolded, so I can't see what you choose. Okay. So remember, you've got to choose. We'll flick through, and you'll say where to stop. And then you'll have two pages, and you need to look at whatever it is, a film or a game or whatever, or a film and a book and a game, and, and also make note of the icon so you know that it was, say, a film and a book or just a film, etc. Okay? You ready? Yeah. So I'm going to put the blindfold on. This is the difficult bit. Uh, my hat there. So <laughs> there is the book. Let me just see where the book is. <laughs> There's the book. Okay. So, Isabel, I'm going to flick through. Yeah. And you're just going to say stop. Okay. All right. Stop. Okay. Do you want to go one more page or stick on that one? I uh, stick on that one. Okay. So, hopefully. Oh, boy. Can you see the two pages? Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. Do you want page A or page B? Page B. That page there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hopefully that allows you to see. Can you see everything on the page? Well, I cannot read, but I can see, yes. <laughs> can you see the icons? Yes. And do you know what it is? I know what it is. And you know what it is. So you know exactly what it is, and you know what the icons are. Yes. And if I close that, so it's absolutely closed, mm -hmm. and I can take the blindfold. Oh, thank God for that. But, okay. So, Isabel. I'm leaving that in view so you know I'm not touching it or trying to find a, a bookmark page or anything. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to cheat. So, look me in the eyes, Isabel. Okay. Uh, and make your mind go blank. No, I'll go to the old gag. Um, so, Isabel, as in the normal thing of charades, uh, you're allowed to tell me the genre. So, 
Is it a film? No. It's not a film. Is it a book? No. It's not a book. Was it a game? Yes. It was a game. Was it a game and anything else or just purely a game? It, it from the icons. Might, it, oh, from the icons, it's only a game. It's only a game. So yes. look at me in the eyes, Isabel. And I'm just going to try and visualize this game now in your head. And let me just see if I can. I've got that. Why? Why? Why, why am I doing that? I, my hands are just getting themselves doing that for some reason. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> ah, Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> terrific. Thank you, Isabel. Awesome. Thank You've you. You've been terrific. Thank you very much. Right, okay, time for our final act of the evening. Uh, is this a pre-record? Uh, we have a magician here locally uh, called Phil Pearson who has decided to move into the field of comedy magic and he did his first stand-up performance at a local uh, comedy open mic. And I'm just going to get the right button to press and this is the show. Now, I just want to warn you, uh, it is, uh, uh, it has been edited, but some little F-bombs might have sl struck through, but we <laughs> uh, but here we go. Phil Pearson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, well, f*** you identify her. <laughs> <laughs> right, isn't it? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Phil Pearson. Some of you may know me as Phil Pearson. <laughs> I almost didn't make it here tonight. Couldn't find my car keys. My wife told me to look harder, so I've got some tattoos and a skinhead. <laughs> Still can't them, so I come on a train. I got some funny looks and I need a lift home. <laughs> Let's do this. You, sir, looks like a guess who character or something. Do you have a handkerchief? No. Just do this, because it's really fucking as well, to be fair. I, of course, do have a handkerchief. But not just any handkerchief. Oh, no. This is a magic handkerchief. <laughs> and we know it's a magic handkerchief because it says it on it. Say that. Yeah. <laughs> when I say, when I find what I'm looking for in my pocket, when I say magic handkerchief, you say woo, magic handkerchief. Magic handkerchief. <laughs> magic handkerchief. <laughs> We'll come back to magic handkerchief. <laughs> Let's do a card trick because what would a magic show be without a card trick? Be a magic show without a card trick. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, looks so in Benjamin's with a sandwich. <laughs> Name a card. It's fine, I know him. <laughs> Name a card. Nope. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make my deck vanish. I have a magic handkerchief. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna place it over my deck. <laughs> Grow up. I'm gonna sprinkle some magic dust on here. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got a magic wand. Because <laughs> what would a magician be without a magic wand? <laughs> be a magician without a magic wand. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make this deck vanish after three. Are you ready? Oh, One, two, three! <laughs> Completely vanished! <laughs> Right, where the f are? Um, so, I don't eat Chinese anymore because of Covid. 
I now don't drink vodka because of Russians. It's really up those f***ing Colombians being <laughs> <laughs> Spend a fortune on tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, these cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking send it out, man. Arm and a leg? No. Yeah. Uh, where are we at? Road trip. <laughs> Let's do a road trip. Can you just feel that that's soft? <laughs> Wait, is it? It's off, yeah? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Oh. And you know, you must have my mouth's rose on you. Cheers, man. I hate you. You know, and I know, the more you play with something that's soft, the stiffer it becomes. Oh. Helps if you're not shaking as well. <laughs> I have some invisible thread here, can you see that? <laughs> no, because it's invisible. <laughs> I'm going to tie it around the top of this rope, watch. And you know what I know, whatever becomes stiff, also becomes soft. <laughs> and not everything is quite what it first seems, this is actually a magic handkerchief! <laughs> You buy your own. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a card trick. Because we're in a magic show, we without a card trick. A magic show without a card trick. <laughs> okay, apparently I need to do this just to prove that I'm actually a magician and not just an idiot. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Yeah. Um. You, sir, the guy that looks like I've drawn you with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Name a number between, say, 10 and 30. Oh. 20. <laughs> I think you'll find there's 20 there, can't you? <laughs> card trick, okay. <laughs> Let's do a card trick. Just choose a card, any card you want, sir. Anyone you want, anyone. Anyone, come on, we've got time to fuck with the bank. <laughs> Just take one, that one, yeah, that's a good choice. <laughs> I'll turn my back. You show all the audience that card. I'll turn my back. I won't be looking. <laughs> Just show them all. Let everyone see. Good time for a selfie, though, isn't it? Everyone say, Be cool! Be cool! Has it taken it yet? Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Did you show everybody the card? Yeah. Everyone see the card? Yeah. Okay, place the card back in the deck. <laughs> Anyway, we ain't got time for fucking about, just place it in there. Anyway, yeah, you happy with that? Okay, I'm going to give the cards a little mix-up. And I'm now going to attempt to find your card. Which is not as easy as it looks. The Ace of Spades! I didn't say it was his card, I'm just saying it's the Ace of Spades. Ah. The Four of Hearts. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, you know. Have you seen this rope trip? Look at this rope trip. Yeah. Let's do a rope trip. Just give that a little pull. Give it a little turn. As you can see, it's got a big spinny end up here. A little one down here. <laughs> <laughs> that one, <laughs> so some magicians use fake rope. They use rope with magnets. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, of course, do not use rope with magnets. Oh, look, it's just there, magnet. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tie this rope around my neck. Don't stop me. <laughs> I'm going to tie this rope around my neck. <laughs> Just remember you didn't stop me. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking late now. So I'm looking at my double chain. When oh. God was giving out chins, I thought he said gins and asked for a double. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise now, so if this goes wrong, as I may headbutt you. <laughs> a few more pints, I might just get headbutt you anyway. <laughs> 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 
Let's go to three in French. You ready? Where we at now? Give us one more. Oh, really? I've got a box full of Okay. Let's do a card trick. Uh, you say, what's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy, I knew that already. Come up here, mate. Sign a card for me. <laughs> Everyone, give Jimmy a card. Please go. Anyone? Sign your name on there. Show everybody. How's it? I played this back in the day. A little help from Milo. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give him a mix up. A joke from magicians. <laughs> okay, your card's not on the top? No. <laughs> and it's not on the bottom, no? No. Same card. Jimmy, come around here a bit. You're blocking the audience. Oh. It's really bad audience Sorry. management, isn't it? <laughs> Can you shuffle cards, Jimmy? Oh, no. No, can you just give it a little try? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is David Dinosaur. Everyone say hello, David Dinosaur. Hello, David Dinosaur. Hello, David Dinosaur. Oh. Dave wants to show you a little magic trick. Watch this. That was, that was a I'm, so, I'm so sorry about that. Jimmy, I'm going to turn my back. You're going to throw the cards in the air. Dave's going to jump, turn around, and catch them. Yep. Right, right. Okay, right. ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Glad you I'm coming up. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, throw the cards in the air. After three. <laughs> One. <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> See, Dave's actually a real magician. Look, he actually got your card. Look. Oh. Take it out. Show everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Jimmy. Take it out. Take it out. <laughs> <laughs> Show everyone the card. Stand up quickly, one last thing, just try this, put your hands out like this. <laughs> Everybody, and now go like this, and now go like this, and now go like this, and like this. And yes, and that's it, yes, thank, you. thank you, Phil Pearson. Thanks a lot. He was going to be in the audience, but I don't think he's made it in time. So uh, that's it. Yep, he has definitely found his niche. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, agreed on that. Um, so that's it for tonight. Thank you all ever so much for coming along. Thank you to Michael Kelly, Medina, Peter Barnard, Bernard, Kip Cherry, Roy Stone, Gunnar from Iceland, uh, the fabulous Dan Harlan and Sarah Ella Fant. I'll, I'll get the wording, get the rhyme of that eventually correctly. Uh, and Charles Schneider, uh, scaring the heck out of us. What the hell? Uh, William Dow, Alan Fisher, Bruce Yoskin, a little bit from me, and ending up on the very funny Phil Pearson from all of us here. Good night. Look after yourselves. Have a great week. And to all of you watching on Facebook Live, you're gone. So good night. Thank good you. Good night, everybody. We will uh, we will stop the recording.